Welcome back to this World of Warcraft Let's Play, your Sambo, and joining us as always is Seraphis, our level 23 Worgen Mage. Say good day, Seraphis. Our fates are intertwined. Our fates are indeed intertwined. In the background there you can see the Master Sclave, and of course the old Titan there that's being resurrected, brought back to life by the Twilight's Hammer. And you may remember in the last episode we found out more about that and ended up over here in the coast of Darkshore, coming across some of the Explorers League Dwarves, let's say hello. What can I do for you? What can I do for you? Well, met. And of course, on your mind? it's Prospector Rem Travel, which you may remember if you've played WoW well before from the early days. He used to have a dig site down here that you used to have to go questing in. And of course, now it's just underwater with the events of the Cataclysm. It's been sunk beneath the water and it's full of Murlocs now. Eek! So I wonder what he's going to get us to do. Oh, and of course, you may also remember that we had a promise to ourselves. We have a look on our map here. You can see if I make it bigger. Here we go, you can see down here, there's this red patch here. We are definitely going to explain archaeology, because of course we've learned archaeology and we haven't done anything about it yet. So we're definitely going to go through that and uh, have a look at what's involved with this relatively new profession which came in in the Cataclysm expansion. But before then, let's have a chat to these guys, see what they want us to well do. Well met. Well met. Sweep and clean the ruins. What does he want us to do? Uh, kill 10 of any combination of Greymist Oracles or Greymist Refugees squatting within Rem Travel's excavation. And of course they are the Murlocs. Yay, so we get to see the Murlocs again. What does Prospector no. Rem Travel actually have to do with us? The absent-minded Prospector. Who are you again? A Seraphis, that's right. No, we haven't met. Oh, and look at this. We actually have to escort the confused prospector, Rem Travel, to his missing journal. Talk to junior archaeologist Ferd at the dig site when you're done. Oh, that's interesting. All right, so that's an escort quest. And in fact, it was an escort quest that we have had to do in the old days before his dig site got swamped in water. So that's very interesting that they're keeping that there. I like that. Just a bit of a hark back to the old days. And it looks like we're going to get some good... Well, either a, f a good ring there, or some nice gloves, which give us a whole bunch more intellect, stamina, and armor. But we won't take that just yet. We'll see what these other ones uh, are. are About swamped secrets. Find a mud-crusted ancient disc from within the nearby ruins. Oh, underneath Rem Travel's forgetful exterior is the mind of a genius, an enigma cloaked in senility. But I'm not about to give up on the old man. A look at what I found on his notes. Not there, no, that's a shopping list. <laughs> Here on the page where he's trying to figure out what year it is, the disc. We think this Titan artifact is some sort of encrypted storage wheel. And we were able to carefully unearth it when the disaster hit, but hopefully it's still in the ruins. Hmm, okay, dive in and grab it for me. All right, so maybe what we'll do is... Yeah, I don't know whether to take the escort quest or not. Let's have a look at the zones that these new ones are in. So they're around here. Ten Murloc squatters killed and the swamp secrets to get the mud encrusted ancient disc. Hmm, I wonder if his escort will take us near you? there. Maybe we will do it. We'll see what happens. Alright, says gather your strength. Watch your face. Oh god, he's so forgetful. Uh, we've got a long way to travel. Yes. What's on your mind? Ready to move. Oh, this is just like the old days. It's so funny because you used to have to escort them down into there, actually, into those dig sites. Not this way, but uh, it's kind of cool that they still have this uh, all here. Oh, actually, maybe it was here. I honestly can't remember. Either way, uh, it's cool that you still have to escort them. Looks like we're going to have to take out a murloc, though, opening with the good old Frostbolt. And it looks like it's a caster, so we're going to lock it down with the counter spell. There we go. Alright, so it looks like we are going to be able to actually uh, tally up our count with the quest here because of course we're wanting to kill any of these murlocs and it looks like by escorting Prospector Ram Travel we're going to be able to do just that. There's some more over here. Now I'm going to use Arcane Blast because of course it gives us that buff. And there we go, it was very handy. Oh, and we've got his little pet there. That's interesting. So it must be a hunter murloc. And once again, that there is counting 2 out of 10 for our quest, sweeping clean the ruins. And you can see some ruins over there, very cool looking. In fact, 
there's some kind of weird portal over there. That's very interesting. All this has come up due to the cataclysm, of course. This was never here before, so it's been brought to the surface. Let's open up with a frost bolt, and then once he starts attacking, we'll use our counter spell to interrupt him. And then throw off a fireball and follow that up with some arcane missiles, which should finish him off. There we go. Now we are collecting small barnacle clams here, and we'll go through that in a minute because uh, they are basically containers. You want to be able to open them up because they give you they give you clam meat pretty much, and we want that because we either want to sell it on the auction house or use it ourselves for cooking. So we'll go through that in a minute. Four out of ten murloc squatters killed. All right now, I wonder where he's taking us. He's obviously not taking us over to those ruins. And, gosh, what's going on here? This is all so new. Oh, 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 oh. We have some copper. You can never let any copper slip past us. You know, what is going on here? It looks like something's been dragged all the way up there. That's bizarre. Let me look on the map. Can't really tell. Alright, so where are you taking us, Prospector Rem Travel? Maybe maybe he is taking us down into the... No, he can't be. Like I said, that was the old place that you used to have to quest. I don't think he's going to take us there, or else he would have walked in the other way. So this is an awfully long way around. He could have gone the other way, mate. What's going on? But this is bizarre as to what this... Oh, here we go. Uh, we're almost there. Who's your face? The camp where I left my notes is just around the corner. Oh, now he decides to run. Here we are back into the Master's Glaive. Hopefully we don't aggro any of the Twilight's Hammer that are here, of course, because they're a little bit high in terms of the big numbers that they have, and they'll swarm upon us like ants and kill us. And of course that happened in a previous episode, you might remember, where we were trying to sneak around with the Panther figurine and it didn't quite... Well, look, look at... He's ending up back where he bloody started. Oh, of course, he's Mr. Forgetful. All right, so that makes sense. Perhaps that's deliberate. Not sure. Buy the three hammers, will you look at that? More ruined. Yeah, come on, mate. You're meant to be looking for your journal. You are so forgetful. Terrible. Wait, what? We're back where we started. What the heck? These ruins I've found are identical to the ones I just left. It's the find of a. Oh, you're an idiot. Seriously. Great to meet you. The absent minded professor. Ah, you've helped Prospector find his missing journal. To think it was here all along. Someday you'll have to show me this other set of ruins he's all, always going on about. Oh gosh. Alright, so let's get ourselves these gloves because he they're going to give us much better stats. So let's have a look at these. Here we go. And it says plus six armor, plus two intellect, plus two stamina. So let's go to our outfit and equip those. And of course, whenever we equip, equip new gear, we want to save that outfit. Let's also switch to our fishing outfit, which means we can also put the gloves on that so we don't have to worry about swapping gloves out. We'll save that as well. Now go back to our normal gear. There we go. All right, so what we want to do is... Oh, we want to gather some more. That's what we want to do. Get some more copper. All right, so we are looking for murlocs and a mud-encrusted ancient disc, which may well be down here, actually, if the map is anything to be believed. All right, so opening up with the frost bolt, and we want to counterspell him. Oh, and I've gone and hit my... How many times do I do that? I hit my evocation instead of counterspell, and of course, the evocation resupplies our mana, but unfortunately, it gives us a long cooldown on it. Ah, bugger. Never mind. Hopefully, we won't need it. Alright, so we are looking for this disc. Whether it's here or not, I'm not sure. Maybe once we've cleared out the murlocs, the map will be a little bit clearer in terms of the marker. Alright, of course the hunter's pet we have to take care of as well. Although it's got very low hit points, so it should be nice and easy to take care of. Yeah, there we go. Oh, and look, here is the disc. Excellent. That was nice and nearby. Mud encrusted disc, we can see there, although crusted in filth, the etched metallic disc shows no corrosion. Alright, so perhaps that's a disc of the Titans. Maybe we'll find out when we hand it in. Opening up with a frost bolt there, let's see if I can actually hit the right spell this time. We want our, our counter spell, and he's running away. Come back here. Alright, let's 
going to say that should clean him up all of our arcane missiles. Now, of course, whenever you... Oh, and he's called to his mate. Murlocs tend to do that, by the way. They kind of um, go run off when they get to low health. And if there's any other Murlocs nearby, they'll actually go and seek assistance. They're quite clever like that, uh, but also quite annoying. Anyhow, um... Yeah, what you want to do when you're underwater, of course, is just keep an eye on your breath counter. Now, if you're running quartz, if you've been uh, looking at my early episodes and you've got any of my add-ons, then you'll have quartz, which is this cast bar, this replacement cast bar that I use instead of the default wear one. As you can see, one of the great side effects of it is it actually has a little breath counter up the top there. So you can see I've got a minute... 30 left until my breath runs out so very very handy little add-on but of course in order to refresh that all we need to do is stick our head above the surface there and there we go all right let's clean up these murlocs let's hover over one and oh it looks like we've already done 10 oh all right gee that went quick all right let's get out of here oh no we have to take care of this oracle first And there's the famous Murloc, or however they say it. And no, I'm not going to do that again. I think I did it quite well, though, to be honest. But anyway, all right, there we go. Ten of the Murlocs slain. Can I leap up here? Is it too steep? No, it's too steep. Hmm. Is that a named one over there? No, it's just a grey mist oracle. All right, let's see if we can get out of here. Um, how do I get out of here? I've gone and got myself lost. All right, I think it's over this way. <clears throat> Now, of course, if I was a Death Knight, it would be kind of cool because I'd be able to uh, enable Path of Frost, which is a handy little Death Knight spell that allows you to walk on water, which, of course, means that you run at normal speed. Very handy, but, of course, because we're a mage, we can't do that. And, yeah, this is definitely the area that you used to have to escort them down into. I do remember that now. All right, let's head back to our little encampment full of dwarves, if I can find them. Oh, here they go. <clears throat> Hopefully a nice bunch of XP for us in what waiting. Can I do for you? Here we go, sleeping clear the room. Yep, 1,350 XP. Definitely a nice chunk there. Now he wants us to collect five pieces of a salvageable, salvageable grey mist wreckage from along the shore and in the water near the excavation. Be good. Right, that's pretty cool. They want some building materials. Great. Oops, get out of the fire. And here's your Titan disc. We'll get 1,350 XP for that. Very nice. Use a buried artifact detector on the beach near Rem Travel's excavation site to locate five ancient device fragments. Combine them to create the ancient slotted device. Very interesting. Okay, and we get ourselves an offhand piece there, but of course we're using a two-handed weapon, so that's not going to be of much use to us, unfortunately. But what is he saying? He says, now that we've found the disc, a lot of our earlier finds are starting to make sense. Shortly after my arrival, Prospect Rem Travel unearthed what he presumed to be a prehistoric toaster. Right, a prehistoric toaster. I don't think so. Anyhow, it's my belief that this slotted box is some sort of data reader. Unfortunately, it broke apart and washed away with the rest of our base camp when the tidal wave struck. All right, so it can't have gone far. Pieces must be buried in the nearby sea. Right, so that's why we're going down to the beach, because we're going to try and construct this thing which might be able to read the disc, which would be very cool. All right, in the meantime, though, before we run out of time in the episode, I'm going to live up to my promise and actually take us down to the dig site because I do want to show you archaeology. So, very cool. One of the new professions that have come in Cataclysm. Definitely want to show you how that works. It's really, really cool fun. All right, um, before we do that, though, let's have a look at these. Where are we? Here we go. The small barnacled clam. And you can see if you hover over it, actually, it says use open the clam. You can sell them like that, but, of course, well worth opening because then you get these, clam meat. Now, clam meat, I don't know about your server, but if you're on here um, on my server, they absolutely sell for a fortune because nobody can be bothered going out and gathering them. And, of course, they're used in a whole bunch of stuff um, for different types of food. And you want to sell them on the auction house or cook the food yourself. Now, by the way, let's have a look. Where are we? Here we go. Here's our cooking. Can we do anything? Oh, actually, we can make her baked eggs with the small eggs. So we could do that. What do they give us? Um, oh, that's quite cool, actually. They are 
an ability, or rather a meal that we cook, a herb baked egg there. And you can see that if you spend at least 10 seconds eating, you'll become well fed and gain two stamina and two spirit. And we all could always do with spirit. But of course, the other drawback is that the small eggs are also worth a small fortune on the auction house. So it's always a dilemma as to whether you use them or um, whether you sell them. To be honest, you should probably use them to skill up first and then go from there. All right, so what's this over here? Grey mist debris, got some float, Sam. Very funny. Salvageable grey mist wreckage. We definitely want to pick up some of that. And look at that out there. What on earth is that? Danger fish, and they're f sort of half floating in the water. Okay, that's going to be interesting. I've never seen those mobs before. And of course, you can see here we've got our buried artifact detector. And that's actually going to come up in the uh, tracker here. So look at the view there. Isn't that fantastic? I just, gosh, it, I love WoW. Seriously, people complain about the graphics, how they're really basic. Well, they are. But how stylized are they? And how cool is it wandering around this huge, big, vast open world? Come on. All right, we're going to use the, there we are. We're going to use the uh, artifact detector. And it's brought up some of these um, buried debris piles here. And you can see that we picked up a brass button. Okay, so it's not exactly what we want. Two brass buttons, an ancient design with a silvery wing emblem. They are not what we're after. We're after some, uh, sel uh, what are we after? Ancient slotted device. So it sounds like it's going to be a little bit random as to what we pick up. Let's do another detection sweep here. And there we go, some more buried debris. A broken timepiece. Okay, so there's a lot of junk here. It's going to be a random chance as to whether or not we get anything. All right, what do we got here? We've got floating greymus debris. So we'll definitely take that. We need five of those. And while we're out here, let's kill this danger fish. I've never actually seen one before. These are definitely a new mob, uh, definitely to this area anyway, in the Cataclysm. And they move really fast. He moved out of range there very quickly. And they're a bit of a monster, aren't they? Level 17, very large. Oh, gruesome looking. Good lord. Look at that. Right now, I don't think we're going to be able to skin them, but we'll just check anyway. Uh oh, big problem now. We have a full inventory. Okay, I'm just going to dump these corroded keys because they're only worth two copper. And can we? Oh, we can skin these. Oh, bugger. And of course, it requires skinning level 70. Can you believe that? You know what? I've really got to find the time to level up our skinning off camera, basically, so that we can get into that. Oops, and that disappeared. Timed out the debris there anyhow before we go any further we'll carry on with these tasks now that we know what we're doing in the next episode what we need to do is get over to these ancient ruins and um, allow me to teach you about archaeology and dig sites and oh look there's actually naga out on that island as well <clears throat> so not only did the uh, cataclysm tidal wave um, sort of bring up these ruins but it also brought up some naga oh whoops Come on, stop having a spaz. There we go. All right, so let's clear these out so we can talk about archaeology because, of course, we're in the perfect place for it given that these ruins have been brought up from the depths. Very cool. And again, once again, they're new. If you've played WoW well in the past, you'll realize that these were definitely never here before. Now, I'm pretty sure we can't skin a nugget. No, we can't. All right, so let's just clear these out a little bit. And then we'll get into the details of archaeology. Very cool. Oh, okay, these guys are taking a bit to die. That's because they are level 19, level 18 and 19. That is why. Okay, so here we go. Let's start at the very beginning. Firstly, of course, we go to our P screen, which is our spell book. And we're looking for professions. Now, of course, you know all about mining. You know all about skinning. And you know that they were choices that we had to make over things like blacksmithing, enchanting, herbalism, alchemy, all those sort of things. So we've chosen to um, take uh, gathering professions, if you will. <clears throat> now, you can only take two of those. However, there are a bunch of free, in inverted commas, professions that everyone can take no matter what two you choose. And by the way, I'm just going to keep an eye out for Naga's respawning. Of course, you're intimately familiar with those because we've covered them off in all of our previous episodes here with Seraphis. And that would be the fishing, you know all about fishing, the cooking and the first aid. Now, of course, they've been, those three have been in the game since day one. What is the new um, free uh, profession, if you like, is archaeology, and that came out just before Cataclysm was launched. Now, there's a an archaeology button here, and there's a survey tool. 
So firstly, if you click on Archaeology, and by the way, I just drag both of these normally um, down to our uh, hotbar, and you can see that they are down there now. So I'm just going to use these buttons here. So there we go. Click on Archaeology, and of course, if you read the tooltip, it says exactly what it does. It allows an archaeologist to find artifact fragments, and that's the very important part, to complete artifacts up to a maximum potential skill of 75. <clears throat> So if you click on that, it'll actually bring up a little um, flavor text thing here, which actually descri describes exactly what's going on. So it says here, <clears throat> to recover artifacts, you need to collect artifact artifact fragments. Okay, so fragments make up artifacts. It's the important thing to remember. Fragments are found in dig sites visible on your map. When you reach a dig site, use the survey ability. Okay, so we'll just pause there for a minute. Let's go into our map and make it full screen. <clears throat> Now you can see here that I've got a little thing down the bottom called show dig sites. Now if we zoom out, here we go. We've been through this before, but you can see these little spades. Now that tells you that in these particular zones, there are, <clears throat> there are dig sites that are available to us at our level. Now, there are dig sites all over this continent, and in fact, if we go into the Eastern Kingdoms, you'll be able to see them all over here as well. But the ones that are within our level range are the only ones that are showing up. So, <clears throat> excuse me, frog in my throat. Let's go to Darkshore. Uh, we can see that there's actually a spade underneath our icon there. If we zoom in on the map again, you'll see that um, it was red before, but it's grey now. That's a bit of a bug. It's a known issue. But it'll actually show a dig site here. Now, if I turn off the quest objectives, there we go. You can see, uh, you probably won't be able to on the... Um, video, but have a look at the color of that island there. And then, if I turn on dig sites, you'll see it sort of turns gray. That should be red, but anyhow, we have entered into a dig site and we found it because there was a spade there. Okay, so there's definitely a spade there. So, if you're in another zone, all you do is make your way to another zone that has the spades in it. Once you're there, um, you can see here there's a couple of gray patches. You need to head to those areas. And of course, that's where we are now. We're in the area that is considered a dig site. All right, so let's bring this up again. <clears throat> Once you're there, you use the survey ability. And that's this spade down here that we've dragged onto our hopper. And it says here, your survey tool will indicate the approximate direction and distance to the cache of fragments. So in other words, in this dig site, this red area here, we are going to basically triangulate. We're going to use a survey tool to try and find exactly where in this zone, because it could be anywhere within that red area, a fragment is hidden. And that's what the survey tool is for. <clears throat> now it says here, your survey tool will indicate the approximate direction and distance to the cache, cache of fragments. You can collect fragments three times in a dig site before you need to move to a new dig site. Once you have enough fragments, you can solve an artifact to learn a little more about Azeroth's past happy hunting. <clears throat> now, that's the important thing. In a site, there are only three fragments. So, once again, looking at our map. Um, if we make it large, oh there, we, look at that, there's the weird bug, it's turned red now. So we, you can see we're clearly inside, if I uh, turn off the quest objectives, we're clearly inside this zone. So in here are three, only three fra um, fragments that we're going to find. If we go into, have a look at Ashenvale here, you can see now that they've turned bright red because that bug's gone. And as Shara there, you can see as well, there's a nice big zone there. In any of these zones are only three fragments. Okay, so that's really important to remember. Now, why do we talk about that? Because if we uh, open this archaeology tab again, and then we go to the completed artifacts tab, you can see these tabs down the side here at the moment, we're on the blue, uh, blue one. If we go to the completed artifacts, it's empty at the moment, and it says here, you do not have any completed artifacts. Find fragments and keystones to complete artifacts. Now, what will happen? is if we go back up here now you see that this has changed and we've got some icons here these are the differing types of artifacts that we can find now we're just going to take pause for a minute and take out this naga because he's probably going to take us out if we carry on talking about artifacts without doing anything about him go does the other one spawn no. oh we're just going to ditch some really cheap junk here that we don't need anymore. Get some linen cloth. And what else can we dump? Yep, two copper. We'll get rid of that as well. Some patch leather braces, which of course sell for more. 
And boy, do we need to go back to Darnassus. Anyhow, all of these indicate the different types of factions or races that are available in terms of collecting artifacts. So, for example, you can collect troll-based artifacts. Or, that one there, that symbol I know all too well, that's fossil-type artifacts. <clears throat> Excuse me. There are all different types of ones. There's dwarven artifacts. Um, there are, I think, night elf artifacts. All these different types. And I think more actually open up later as well. But what will happen is, is somewhere in this dig zone are three fragments. Once we collect a fragment, we'll go back and have a look at this. And you'll see how we're able to actually collect, I think it's up normally up to around 30 fragments. So that's important, all right? Once you have collected 30 fragments and you get a little ticker that um, shows you your progress, you can then solve that particular artifact, okay? So 30 or 31, whatever it is, fragments to collect. Once you've got them, you solve the artifact. All right, now we'll take a pause there. Take out this guy. So I'm sorry we're having to go through and talk a lot about this, but it's well worth explaining because, boy, it can be confusing at first. It took me ages to figure it out. <clears throat> Alright, so, once you have the, the 31 fragments, you um, solve an artifact and it will be comp become a completed artifact. And it will be of a type. And you may get a little trinket. You may get something that has a lot of lore text associated with it. And by the way, if you're into the storyline, archaeology is a must-have because it, it explains a lot of the back history of all sorts of things um, throughout and across all these different factions. So it's absolute gold. It's fantastic. And of course, you get to keep them and uh, look at their history forever. It's like uh, collecting books, if you like. Um, but once you have solved it, you will complete an artifact. And once you've completed it and you get that lore item, uh, you get to keep it forever. Now sometimes, if you get a rare artifact, you might get something like a companion pet, or um, some kind of trinket, or some kind of really unique cool tool, including, by the way, a mount. All right. So it's well worth doing, there are lots of rewards. So, how does it work? Well, we click on this, our survey button, you can see here, survey for archaeology fragments within a dig site now we, we know we're in a dig site each survey will direct you closer to the location of the fragments so what's going to happen is we're going to get a tool come up now it's going to point in a direction that is the direction approximately that the ar uh, ar artifact is in on the uh, little tool that pops up here the survey tool it will have a flashing light that light will be either red amber or green if it's red, it means that the artifact is far away. If it's amber, it means you're close. And if it's green, it means you're very, very close in the direction that it points. All right. Hope you've got all that. <laughs> After all that, let's actually give it a go. Here we go. We're going to use the survey tool. And there it is. Okay, so it disappears quickly, by the way. You can see it's red, so it's far away, and it's pointing off in that direction. All right. So that probably means it's a mount up. That's probably the best thing to do. If it's red, it means it's quite a way away. So we need to probably get over there somehow. So let's do that. I'm thinking it's actually going to be in those ruins. Let's I'm take care of green. these guys along the way. Good old sound of the clear cast there. Giving us a free shot, basically. And a nice dose of XP as well. 1678 XP. And of course, archaeology means that you are going to, um, you know, while you're looking for these dig sites, you're also going to be killing monsters, so it's a good way of gaining XP as well. Don't you run away. Here we go. Alright, so we're probably a little bit close. Oh, look at that. We've got some willow pants of the monkey. Let's actually take them. Because, are they actually better than what we've got? No, they're not. But... Uh, we'll be able to sell them on the auction house. That bag is full. And we need to dump something else. Boy, we need to go to the auction house to empty our bags. Getting ourselves a small clam there, and we'll open that up, Inventory of course. Is full. Oh! Oh, because they only stack in 10, actually. Whoops, the clam meat only stacks in 10. Damn it. All right, so what can we get rid of? Good Lord. Um, mm, we've still got this panther figurine, but we're going to need that. Um... What's the cheapest thing? Hello. What is the cheapest thing we can get rid of? Oh, look at that. Oh, we've discovered Nez. 
Nez Vel and Nez Vel and we managed to um, <laughs> that person congratulated us as they fly off we got a discovery achievement gosh it's all happening now today isn't it folks um, just so you know you get an achievement for exploring an entire zone and with this um, latest uh, the ruins rather coming up we actually managed to tick it off and you can see up here ruins of Orbedine, the shadow spear war camp the withering thicket the eye of the vortex etc etc lord danelle the master's clay and of course this nazj vel is the last place that we got and uh where are we explore where is it Ashenvale, that's probably where we're going to be heading next, and you can see there, you can not only track it, by the way, uh, but you can see that we've got none, and that gave us a nice 10 achievement points, 190 achievement points now, very happy about that. All right, let's use our survey tool again, and see what direction it points us in. Okay, so still pointing this way, and it's still red, so that means it's probably going to be inside these ruins, which makes sense, of course. So we're going to have to clean out. Oh, and we've got all sorts going on. Let's lock it in place. Oh, and we got knocked down. This could be bad. Of course, what we could have done there is polymorph her, turn her into a sheep. And that would have uh, put the clampers on her, so to speak, and she wouldn't have been able to attack us. Right, so the clams, I think I'll let them stack by themselves for now, by the way, because it takes up less room. Now, these artifacts could be up top, they could be downstairs. Let's use our survey tool again. Okay, so you can see it's actually pointing over in this direction now, so it could well be up here somewhere. It was still red though, so it still means it's quite a way away. Let's use it again. And, okay, look at that. It's green now. Okay, so that means it's just up here somewhere. Very close. And still very close. And there it is. So you can, use, you can see how it's worked. And you can see here, this is actually a night elf archaeology find that we've unearthed. So let's right click on that and collect it. There we go. And you can see what happened there is it actually says in our log here, Night Elf Archaeology Fragment 4. We've collected four of them. So one dig doesn't necessarily mean one fragment. It can mean multiple. Now, if you're looking in your bags, you're not going to be able to find them. And you think to yourself, hang on, I just collected these. Where on earth are they? Well, where they are is in your archaeology page here. So that's the first big thing. Don't freak out if you can't find them. And you can see here that it was a Night Elf Archaeology Fragment that we got and that makes sense of course because we're in night elf land so to speak and you can see here now that we have this night elf okay so if we look at the main screen you can't click on any of these until you actually start collecting them we've now collected four out of 30 of the night elf archaeology fragments so obviously we need to get that up to 30 but now that that's become you know active we can actually click on it and here you can actually get the information so firstly you can see the number of fragments needed to complete this artifact and here is the artifact up the top so this progress bar will work along as we collect more fragments and you can see that it's four out of 30 you know we might get eight in the next one etc 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 that's going to go up to 30 once it gets up to 30 you can click the solve button there and that will actually solve that artifact and that's what you want to do however what is it this is the thing and they're going to be different every time necklace with a loon pendant so it's a common um, rarity so it's not going to give us anything special except it is going to give us some history flavor text there and you can see here the Keldari which is another name for the night elves are one of the most ancient races in Azeroth uh, one of the darkest moments in their history occurred when Quel'Darai, or Highborn, the highest caste of elven nobility, unleashed dangerous magic that brought the Burning Legion into the world and resulted in countless deaths. So you get these sort of history snippets here. It's very cool, again, if you are into the lore of WoW, which I am big time. Alright, so... Once we've actually completed that, it will appear in our completed artifacts tab, which again is where we'll be able to go in forever and a day and actually read up on all that text and history. Very cool. Now, by the way, I'd like to know what this portal is up here. I have no idea. But, of course, we're going to have to leave that to, well, we leave that till the next episode. And, of course, we're also going to have to leave gathering uh, until the next episode. Or maybe we'll do one more. See if 
the survey says it's up close. Let's use the survey tool here. And oh, it's yellow, so it is kind of close. It's up there, they reckon. Maybe we can climb around this way. Can we, can we, can we? Yes, we can. All right, let's use it again. Maybe we'll get another one relatively quickly. All right, so it's over here somewhere. Nearby, it reckons, as we clamber around these ruins. And of course, feeling like Dr. Jones, Dr. Indiana Jones. And by the way, we will come across Harrison Jones, uh, which of course is a play on Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones in the game because archaeology and the dwarves as well. And the Explorers League, it's a big part of the game. I love it. Okay, here's another night elf archaeology find. And you can see that time we picked up three night elf archaeology fragments. So again, if we go into our archaeology tab, we can click on night elf. It says 7 to 30. And you can see that this progress bar has worked its way along. So there we go, it's uh, something that we'll be definitely doing and pursuing on this character because I love it, I absolutely love it, and I really want to um, complete archaeology on a character. I'm nearly, well I've done a lot of it on my main, my death knight, uh, and I've managed to get myself a little fossilized hatchling out of it so far, which is pretty cool, pretty happy with that. Alright, so I think that's it for this episode, certainly hope you enjoyed it, in the next one we will continue on all of the quests that we got around here, and of course we'll continue doing the archaeology, uh, we've got one more fragment to find there, and hopefully we'll find out more about these ruins, so I certainly hope you'll join us in that next episode, although gosh, we really need to get to Darnassus, I think what we will do perhaps is finish off the archaeology and then we'll hearth back and empty our bags and do all of our house cleaning there, that might be the go. Anyway, until then, it's me, Sambo, and of course, Seraphis, our Worgen Mage, saying hope you're having a great day, uh, look forward to seeing you next time, take care, and bye-bye.